spend any amount of time on this channel and you'll see plenty of people decrying any automaker that isn't Tesla in the comment section. If it's not a Tesla, they're not interested because in their eyes, Tesla is the only electric automaker that's really serious about making electric cars. And when compared to some car companies, I'd have to agree. Many like Ford, Volkswagen and Fiat Chrysler, for example, have little to no interest at all in selling electric cars. But others like Renault in Europe are doing some incredible things. In fact, in Europe, a 49% sales increase has taken place across the continent during the first quarter of this year because of Renault. And while cars like the Outlander plug-in hybrid and Volkswagen Passat GTE are leading the plug-in hybrid push across Europe, the Renault Zoe was Europe's number one plug-in car in terms of sales volumes for the first quarter of this year, beating the Nissan Leaf, BMW i3, and yes, even the Tesla Model S. In fact, according to data from the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, the Renault Zoe EV sold 9,083 units during the first three months of this year, while the Nissan Leaf sold 5,940 units, and the Tesla Model S sold just 3,015 units. It's some change from this time last year, when the Nissan Leaf nabbed top space with 6,424 units, and the Renault Zoe just sold 5,761 units. So why the big change? What's the reason for it? The new 40 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that's turned the Renault Zoe from a handy zero emission shopping or commuting car for urbanites into a long legged day tripper that's capable of covering a good 180 miles, about 290 or so kilometers per charge. What's more, it's available at a price that won't break the bank. And that makes the new 40 kilowatt hour Renault Zoe Europe's killer EV. Sure it might not have the same kind of fancy autonomous drive technology that the Tesla Model S or the Tesla Model X has, and ordering one won't give you the same kind of social cachet among your peers as nonchalantly dropping the fact that you're on the wait list for a Model 3. But thanks to Renault's purchase options, where you can opt to buy the car outright with the battery included, or buy the car outright and then lease the battery, the effective at purchase sticker price for a new Renault Zoe is far lower than either the Opel Ampera E or the Tesla Model 3, and I bet the new Nissan Leaf. And while admittedly customers have to either opt to pay a higher sticker price or pay a monthly lease fee on top of whatever finance package they have for the batteries, the Renault Zoe is remarkably good value. When I first drove the Renault Zoe with Mark Chatterley back in 2013, we both agreed that the French hatchback, while a little plasticky in its trim, was the perfect first electric car for young families thanks to its normal appearance, no-nonsense interior, and familiar controls. Easy to thread through busy city traffic and happy on the motorway too, the Renault Zoe's only letdown at the time was its inability to charge from a standard household plug. And that changed with the introduction of the Zoe 1.5 model, which improved the onboard chameleon charger and offered customers the choice to forego the high power 43 kilowatt AC charging and limit the highest charge rate to 22 kilowatts of three phase charging for a more efficient charging experience at lower power rates and the ability to use an emergency household plug to charge. That revision, quite minor at least in how appealing the car was in everyday use, was met with praise by some and frustration by others, but nearly everyone I've spoken to agrees that the most recent revision to the Zoe, that massive battery pack upgrade from the original 24 kilowatt hours to 40 kilowatt hours, has been instrumental in helping the Zoe become such a killer car for European customers. With a combination of low sticker price, decent range, and quick refueling capabilities, the Renault Zoe really has helped transform the affordable electric car market in Europe and beyond. But while existing electric car owners view the Zoe favorably thanks to its range, it's the price point and the battery rental model which helps alleviate concerns that first-time electric car owners may have about plug-in cars. And while you may end up having to pay for that battery pack in the end, thanks to continued lease payments, there's an element of vehicle ownership psychology that Renault is tapping into very, very nicely. Namely, that battery rental is easy enough to write off in a family budget as a straight swap for petrol costs, turning it into a running cost rather than a deprecating asset that will ultimately lose the owner money. Combined, all of these reasons make the Zoe a compelling buy for anyone living or working in any of its key markets. And if I'm honest too, the fact that Renaults are seen as everyday cars for everyday people probably has a part to play in its appeal. But will the Zoe EV continue its surge in sales when the Tesla Model 3 or next generation Nissan Leaf launched? 
It will either car knock Renault off the top spot for battery electric vehicles in Europe or in any of their other markets? Or will Renault be able to beat the competition and stay at the top? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos from me, why not contribute to my running costs via Patreon? I've left a link below and there's a clickable one at the end of this video. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow. And until then, keep evolving.